Whoa, you guys are early. Not so early, I didn't think. Well, I, I thought I'd be alone here for a minute. Hold on. <laughs> I joined like an hour ago, just waiting for me. <laughs> Nothing would surprise me with you guys. Holy moly. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> Okay, I heard Eric, your tumor. Uh, John, oh no, wait a minute, that wasn't Eric. Was that John? No, maybe that was Eric. Anyway, it was Eric. That's what I thought. <clears throat> John, are you there? Yes, good morning. Good morning. And Tommy. Yo. Yo, Lance. Hello, I'm here. Hello. All right. It's funny, I was assuming we'd actually have a really short call today and then things kind of grew. So we'll see how it goes. Hello, Christoph. Hello. Hey, Manuel. Hi. And Christian. Oh, no microphone yet. And, and then in that case, we'll go for Clemens. Yes, hello. Hello. Christian, you finally there? Yeah, hey, Doug. Hello. <laughs> Simon, are you there? Yes, sir. Hello. Hey, dog. Good morning. Hey, Lou. How's it going? Hi. Mr. Baldwin. David, are you there? I wonder if you're on double mute. Uh, one more time. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> okay. And Brian, are you there? Hello, Doug. Hello. Lucas, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Hello. Hi. Hey, and what about Jesse? Yep, I'm present. Hello. Thank you. Yep. Lionel. I'm here. Hello. Hello. Anish. Hey, Doug. Hello. Klaus. Yeah, hi. I'm here. Hello. All right, Daniel, are you there? Here. Hello. All right, one more minute, then we'll get started. Remy. Hey, Remy. All right, tell you what, there we go. Three after, let's get started. All right, first things first. Um, who's gonna be around next week? Does anybody wanna have a call next week? I know that to a lot of people, they kind of start their vacation around the 15th or so. That gives like two full weeks for the end of the year. But 
uh, the fifteenth, I believe, is like Tuesday or something like that. Do you want? Does anybody want to have a call next week, or should this be the last one for the year? Need some opinions. I'm all for that right. because I'm. I won't be here. Okay. I won't be here. Okay, Brian and Clemens. Anybody else want to chime in? This was Lance. I won't be here. Okay. <laughs> so I guess I think you have your answer. Hold on, sorry, my machine's doing something weird. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Weird. My Mac says I'm completely muted, so I don't know what's going on. Okay. So let's let's turn this around then. Um, does anybody want to have a call next week? Oh. <laughs> Just because you're here, does that mean you want to have a call, Simon and Manuel? I have a feeling. Okay. Uh, I think we can run that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think, okay. I'm not hearing anybody really say, but like they're, they're anxious for a call. So and let's just say this is it. Okay, cool. All right, community time. Anything from the community people want to bring up? All right. SDK call was last week. I think we just talked about the trace extension a little. Lance had a couple of questions on that. Um, anybody have any questions for the SDK subgroup? All right, moving on then. We technically have a discovery interrupt call after this one. So please, if you're planning on doing implementation, stick around. <clears throat> um, it might be kind of short, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, Timur, anything you wanna talk about relative to the workflow subgroup? All right, I'll, I'll make this quick. Yeah, we're working basically currently on the roadmap for our 0 0.6 release. So there's a lot of stuff going around that. The only other thing is we had a ton of contributions for our Go SDK, so that was big. And if anybody is also in this call, thank you. Uh, so that, and then also I just want to mention, we only have like a couple of days left for KubeCon EU talk submissions, right? So kind of trying to figure that out. Okay, good reminder. KubeCon, oops, hold on. KubeCon EU CFP deadline coming fast. All right, any questions for Timur about workflow? All right, in that case, I opened up a PR. I apologize that I was a little late on this, but I didn't expect too many people to care. Um, for version 101, and here's a list of all the significant PRs. I did kind of drop all the ones that were like typo in nature. Um, did any, does anybody have any concerns, notice anything wrong? in the diff here, most of it was changing out the work in progress to be just one zero for anything that appears in the spec and one zero one for anything that's in the document. So that's why you see in the docs, see them, something like that. Anybody notice anything weird? Okay, any objection then to approving that? And we had, that would make us officially have a 101. All right, not hearing any objection, cool. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations to one and all. Okay, so on last week's call, we agreed to rename the master branch uh, dev. However, <laughs> um, when I tried to make the change, I did not realize what would happen. Um, and it basically closed all PRs that were associated with the master branch. I kind of assumed they would get migrated over or something like that. Well, it didn't. So I recreated master branch and, that, and then I re-brought back all those PRs back to life. Uh, so we're, we're back to a, a happy state. Um, and I did some looking around and I believe GitHub is working on some migration tool or something to help with this situation. I'm assuming they'll do some sort of migration thingy. So until that happens or until we actually close all of our PRs, I don't think we can easily make the, the, the name change unless you want to force everybody to redo their PRs, which I don't want to do quite yet because I don't think that's necessarily urgent to do. Um, but let's see if we can at least get down to maybe one PR or so, then we can force somebody to, to redo it. But unless someone can think of some process I'm not noticing, um, I don't think we can just do a simple rename without breaking something. Okay, not hearing anything. Okay, before we get into the other PRs, I wanted to give Slinky a chance to talk about Google Summer of Code, and then he wants to obviously talk about his language expression thingy. So Slinky, you wanna take over? Yeah, so this is mostly from the SDK land. And there, there is some contributors which might be interested in doing uh, the 
some of code contributing to SDKs. So I was trying to figure out what what would be a nice argument uh, or nice projects we could do. And I have two in my mind. So one is develop, um, um, do a project to continue the efforts of the integration tasks. So as, you, as probably some of you recall, at some point we discussed about conformance tasks, kind of TCK for the SDKs, but nobody had a chance to continue that. Uh, that effort. So I don't know, maybe it might be something cool as a summer of code project. Another project could be developing a new SDK with some language that we still don't support. I, I have some examples that I can provide. And I think that might be another interesting project. So, well, my question for you is, do we want to enroll uh, the uh, CNCF serverless working group to, to the summer of code? Or can we, or can we somehow start uh, start from um, from the from the CNCF foundation, then push some projects through through the CNCF foundation and rolling? So, what does it mean to sign up for the for the for this um, summer of code thing? Does it what is it just? Does someone need to provide guidance to them? What, what, what kind of effort is involved on our side? So uh, um, on our side, the effort is first we need some uh, we need somebody that can actively follow some student. So that's one thing, uh, and that can definitely help with that. Uh, and another one is that uh, um, as an organization, uh, we need to fill out some some forms. Uh, to get us approved in the summer of code? I'm, I'm pretty sure that we can't do that from a legal perspective because the point of us being here is that we're a neutral venue. And it would be really weird if we as a community would be then contributing to projects that are effectively breaking that, uh, um, breaking the setup. Because ultimately we would be contributing into a effort that's run by one company. So I am sure. fairly sure that by the rules of the CNCF, that is not possible. I recall that Linux Foundation sometimes enrolled to to the summer of code as a foundation. Oh, I, 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 for example, for example, the, uh, sorry, uh, for example, the Eclipse, Pro, uh, the Eclipse Foundation does it every year, and I and they managed to to mentor some some people in the past. That. Doesn't it kind of depend on what these forms are asking? I mean, if the form is just saying, "Hey, do you want to submit some ideas for students?" or is it some sort of legalistic thing? I mean, that would that would influence it, wouldn't it? Uh, to be honest, I I'm not sure, but I. Get, I get, I'm pretty sure that the CNCF as foundation can can enroll to that. I'm pretty sure. Well, can you get a hold of the forms and then <clears throat> we can take a look at it and uh, we can also reach out to the CNCF team or uh, uh, leadership to find out if this is even legal. Yeah, oh, sure, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I can, if you give me one second, I can try to check if last year we, I mean, the CNCF wasn't there. Because, because really, I'm not sure, I'm not sure that I want, that, that I want to contrib contribute to a Google uh, recruiting drive. <laughs> well, when you put it that way. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, that's what it is, right? It's like, it's like, hey, are we going to go and continue in, in Microsoft Imagine Cup? That's kind of the same thing. And well, I think the answer is no. <laughs> if you put it on this way, I mean, I personally, I, mean, I, I personally don't care. If, uh, I think the, the effort is interesting and we can get, uh, as a community, we can get something from it. Uh, said that, I, I don't care if you, if you come and you say, look, uh, I, uh, we wanna, I wanna do uh, the, the Microsoft thingy uh, about 
contributing to open source. So we want to do the Red Hat Finky contributing on open source. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I don't care yeah. about that. See, the, my, my, my question in those things is, why are they doing that? Like, like, what's the end game here? And there's always an end game in those things. So Google is not doing that because they're, they're really nice. I mean, they might be doing that because they're really nice, but ultimately there's a motivation behind those things and, uh, and what you're contributing to. At the end, uh, everyone has a motivation, even in this group. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's I mean, right. <laughs> but the, my, yes. my, but the, thing is, the thing is, we are here. We are here uh, together because we are a neutral ven venue um, to develop open to develop open standards. And then, if I would find it iffy, if we would then, as that venue, go and participate into something that uniquely benefits a single company. And it doesn't matter whether it's Google or Microsoft or Amazon or whoever. Uh, I, I do get your point. Uh, for me, it's uh, maybe I'm uh, too pragmatic. It's just almost uh, free money. And if we are here to just make sure that they are not trying to steal the project in a way. <laughs> there is no such thing as free money. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I mean, uh, I, I, like in a way, your company also decide that you will spend some time with us, and they probably pay you while you are working together. So. No, no, absolutely, I do. But we also have goals in those things, and but we're everybody has goals, but we're neutral here. But then, then we're not together contributing into a third thing. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, that's why I think both are defendable. In my opinion, if we do that, it's just our group needs to make sure that we keep this independence. And yeah, and we can't we because it's under the umbrella of under the umbrella of a Google proprietary effort. That, that I'm not a lawyer, so I, I really don't know. So, so Slinky, when is the deadline to, to sign up for this? Uh, I need to check. Uh, uh, I recall it's like January. Yeah. So it sounds like we may have time to to do a little more investigation and then come back with a, um, come back in January and, and discuss okay, this maybe so, in our first meeting. So from 29 January to 19 February, a uh, mentoring organization can begin something. Like okay, so we have we have time to do some investigation then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay, so would you be willing to agree to, to do some, to, uh, well, see, what's interesting is when I was looking at these links you sent, I couldn't find the actual form to fill out that you're talking about. Maybe you could. Uh, because because it's open. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, uh, they, they opened the form uh, in January. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, then tell you what, let me go ahead and I'll, I'll take the action item then to, to reach out to, um, to Chris Anacek to find out why the CNCF is okay with this when it's a company led thingy. To try to address your concerns, Clemens. Is that okay? Yep. okay. Yes. Oh, actually, one thing I should do. When do you want to start back up again? <laughs> Let me just double check my calendar. When it's, let's see this. So the first Thursday in January is the seventh. Um, is that the? So the first is Friday. I assume most people, everybody has the first, or everybody's going to have the first off because that's New Year's Day. Um, will, people, will most people be taking off the first week in January, the fourth through the eighth? So the first day should be the fourteenth, or do you want the first meeting to be on the seventh? Okay, Lance is okay with the seventh. Anybody else? I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, fourteen. Okay. I need I need some people to speak up here because I'm I'm hearing a little more towards the fourteenth, but fourteenth. Okay. Okay, I'm hearing a soft leaning towards fourteen. Anybody have a strong disagreement with that? And would really really want to meet on the seventh. Okay, we're going to go for the fourteenth then. Thank you all. All right, so back down to here. Um, okay, I'll talk to Chris and see why this is okay from a legal perspective, or in a, even a perception perspective. Um, Slicky, anything else you want to talk? I just put a reference to the to the to the key clause from the oh. rules into the okay. chat. Cool. Let's hold on a minute. 
Let's take a quick look. Let's see, 8.1. Visibility. B, 3, B. Oh, B. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. It's well hidden, but that, that, that is exactly where they're doing that. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, as, I I, as, I said, as I said on the chat, interesting enough, I was hired by Red Hat after <laughs> the server of code and not by Google. <laughs> it's that one D three B. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. All right. I will, uh, I will quiz Chris on that one and get you some information. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Anything else on Google thingy? Okay. In that case, Slinky expression language. Yeah, so first I want to reply to Timor, Timor, Timor in the chat. Uh, so he asked uh, if we could use that outside of CA. Well, the, the idea is that uh, we should develop some language which is really designed to, to get cloud events as input. So if, uh, I mean, I guess workflow is based on cloud events, so that could work, I guess. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for answering. Okay. okay. Wait, your answer is it's CE, it's CE specific, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Then. So, so I I did some uh, investigation on the thing you sent uh, last week, um, Clements. So, I, I I saw some differences uh, which are interesting. Uh, we, uh, regarding that particular MQP filtering uh, using SQL, um, but none of them are. Um, I, I mean, we we could solve them. Uh, it's not really a big issue. Uh, what I'm trying to understand is what do we gain from using a SQL dialect more than developing our own grammar? Yeah, standards. Try to be try to be more specific. <laughs> yeah, we 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 are gathered here together to make sure that we're not doing things, uh, we're not inventing things that have already been invented. That was that is one of the principles that we're that we're following here. It's like we have not created our own transport for cloud events. We're using existing transports. Um, we have not we not, have not invented our own our own uh, encoding encoding system. Uh, we're using existing ones. And so therefore I would be very happy if we would be using existing uh, filter models rather than uh, using, yeah, rather than inventing one if we can avoid it. Yeah, but what I struggle to see is uh, how creating a SQL dialect, uh, it, it's really using a standard because here we are just saying, uh, hey, look, we were used the same syntax, the same grammar of, of another standard, but in fact, the, the language is different and the evaluation is different. So how, how, how are we really reusing SQL if, if we go down the road uh, that you propose? SQL, 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 SQL the, the, the subset of SQL that is being used in JMS and that every messaging developer who's using JMS knows um, is, is governed by the rules of SQL 92, and, and which means SQL 92 also indicates that is pretty old and pretty established. So I'm not sure whether and I'm not sure whether we should and, and it's apparently such that it, it has been very stable over the years in that all major message brokers are using that language. And so it does the job. So the question is why shall we go and and and, and invent a new thing? Well I'm not really saying um... My point is still, uh, let, let's say let's say we want to go down the path and develop a SQL dialect. Okay. When when I get down and, and I start the, and I start implementing it, let's say in SDK Go, for example, what can I effectively reuse of what's already uh, the developer's already knowledge? It do, it's not about the code; it's about the user. 
Okay. Users, uh, okay. If you, if you put understand, it... so users of, of, of uh, users have to do with messaging systems, which, which we're dealing with here, um, and who are familiar with who are familiar with GMS, for instance, which is the predominant API for messaging, um, and because most people are using Java, um, uh, are familiar with message selectors, and that's using a, a SQL language. So you're picking picking up a lar a large number of users exactly where they are with something that they know. That is like that's like. Do you want, it's the same thing as with databases, right? Everybody has, and I think I said that last time, um, we went from SQL to, oh, SQL is not, SQL is bad, and so therefore we should go and do our own thing for about you know, three or four years, and now every database is doing SQL again. If you're looking at stream analytics, everybody's doing SQL. Spark is doing SQL, as Samza is doing SQL, Confluent is doing SQL. Everybody's doing SQL. There is no reason why we should why we should go and, and invent a new thing that is just that is just different because it's cloud events. Yes, there might be dialect -like differences, but there, SQL has won all the wars on the database front as well as in in and is now winning in streaming. So I don't see a reason why we should have a different language. Well, I I rather see this in a different way that serverless users come from a JavaScript background. So I would love to give them some more, uh, some syntax, which is more familiar for them. Uh, everybody's using SQL. I mean, literally, everybody is using SQL with everything. So I, th I think I could differ on that also, and it would be more on the Slinky side. I think like JSON path in a way is better than, uh, or JSON query would be better than SQL. If you look at like people who really just do JavaScript, because of like uh, all the NoSQL uh, database, I think they do less SQL. Like at least I do way less SQL than I used to do uh, 15 years ago. But uh, yeah, your but argument you, are still good. But, uh. <laughs> guys, you have to you have to you have to took, take a look at what, what's happening in the event in, in the eventing space, right? In in eventing, we're we're having we're having a, a we have giant fights in in terms of who's building the better. You know, event analytics analytics platforms, and all of them, all the abstractions are all using SQL. Like so, there is, you, you have you have Apache Beam as a top abstraction. As, as I said, you have Spark and Samza and Storm, and KSQL, and and all of those are. And you have Azure Stream Analytics that is SQL language. Um, the the there's a, a SQL um, uh, dialect that is in um, in Kinesis. Um, everybody's using SQL. So just to remind everybody, we do have a speaker's queue and my hand's up. <laughs> All right, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 that's yeah. fine. Because um, you, you, know, you guys usually are, are good about this stuff. Just want to remind people. Um, so I have a, I have a question. Um, would it be useful to help come to, the, to, to, to an answer if we can actually see examples in both SQL and the alternatives that people are pr proposing. Like, so for example, Slinky, you were proposing JavaScript or some variant of JavaScript kind of thing. It, it would help me out if I could actually look at what the two look like, because I obviously understand the desire for standards. That's why we're here. Um, but it's 100% clear to me how it would look and feel from a SQL perspective. I kind of guess what it would look like, but I'd love to know for sure, just by saying, okay, if you want to do a filter, I want all cloud events that have a type of this and another attribute matching this or a type of this or an attribute matching that. Just see how the and and ors look in the choice of languages just to see what they look like. Because I think that would help me out because I'm all for standards when they make sense. And if we look at the SQL one and it says, oh my God, yes, it's great, it's a standard, but my God, that, that, that's painful to use and unnatural, then I'm not as inclined to do it. But if it's simply a, a minor syntactical difference between SQL versus JavaScript, then that worry, is lessened to me. So is it possible to get some concrete examples to see what they both look like? Go ahead, Slinky. Yeah, you can open the, uh, the thing I sent in the chat. Oh, cool, okay. Whoops, sorry, wrong window. It's, again, it's, n it's not a spec, it's more a bump of ideas I had uh, for that. So. Okay. 
Yeah, and there is a section of samples at the beginning. And th this is JavaScript though, right? Or JavaScript, this is your, this is your. This is the, the expression language, yeah. Yeah, so th this is something brand new is what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Do we have something that shows what the SQL would look like? So if I go, if I go uh, into. Yeah, go you can into, open. If, if I go into the examples from top, exactly where we are, the, the first one would be exists. The second is a simple equal. The third one is first name equals Francesco or subject equals Francesco. Uh, the next one is uh, all the all the uh, parentheses are the same and then first name equals Francesco and last name equals Guardiani or subject equals, so single equals. Um, then case incident insensitive equals is a, um, is a, uh, Collate, but that's not in. That's actually not in the subset that has that JMS has. Um, also, because that's case insensitive. It's case insensitive comparisons are just too hard, um, and that's why nobody's doing them on the on the hot path. Um, time year would be daytime. There's a daytime subset um, uh, operator um, that will give you then the year. Um, there is no conversion because everything is UTC by default. Um, and then sequence equals 10. So simple, simple equal. And there's no, and there's no, um, all the, all the type, all the typing um, is implied, implied there's, there's infer inference rules in SQL. But you can cast, you can, you can, you can, you can typecast in SQL. Okay. Thank you very much. So that, that helps a lot. So it sounds like, at least for these examples up here, it's a, it's a relatively minor syntactical difference. Yes, it's, my, it's small the, the syntactical differences is that here we're using um, effect. This is all using kind of the, the C languages uh, way of expressing these things. And um, um, SQL is doing that with you know, its constructs, like or and, and all the, the, the operators that are more explicit. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Lionel, I believe your hand's up next. Uh, yeah, I just want to, to say what, uh, a question about the type system, right? So uh, when we talk about timestamp in, uh, in SQL, is that exactly the same timestamp that uh, we have in uh, the cloud event specification? In particular, I think SQL use uh, the ISO uh, 8601. Um, so do we. Uh, we, right. we use, and, we use which is different, which different for for sorry uh, for uh, for the C, which is more like based on the IRC uh, um, specification. Yeah, there so, are minor differences, but so cl cl so cloud events is using RFC three 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 nine, which is a which is a profile of ISO eighty six or eighty six oh one. Yeah, that's a profile, but there's like minor uh, syntactic differences between the two. Right, so that's something we no, need to subset. sound. No, it's a subset. It's a profile of. So all, every every RFC three 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 nine string is a compliant ISO eighty six or one string. All right, I think it was not my understanding, but okay. Okay, I thought I saw another hand up there a minute ago. Did someone drop out? Okay, so I'd like to hear from other people if they have opinions on this. Should I pick on somebody? There we go, Mr. Mitchell. Just to help you out. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the, um, I guess one of the things I would say is, is just looking historically, right? Everybody jumped on things like Mongo, right? Uh, and various ORM custom languages. And if you look at their evolution, they all started re-adding constructs basically from squeal, right? As they evolved. Right? So, so I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think history has been kind to people fighting against squeal for these kinds of problems. 
I'm, you know, I'm not the biggest squeal fan in the world, but that's just the way things have worked. So, you know, I guess from that standpoint, I'm, I'm, uh, I guess I'm throwing in with uh, Clemens' argument. I have to admit, the fact you're calling it squeal instead of SQL is great. I love that. <laughs> it just cracks me up. I like that too. <laughs> <laughs> I had never heard that before. I swear, that is hilarious. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, Tim, or your your hands up. I think Anish was first. Oh, okay, it's showing the other way to me, but go ahead, Anish. Uh, I'd like to propose a different way to solve this problem. I mean, I don't know if everybody agrees to that. So let's pick it from usage perspective. So considering our current use case that where we want to put this expression language or SQL in terms of user, we need to understand that where are we going to place it from the user experience perspective. So if, for example, we want to put the syntax in the URL of, of the discovery API or the subscription API, we have to probably ask ourselves that, do we want to go ahead with these uh, operator-based syntax or do we want to put an entire SQL query into that URL? So I think then that would give us a better perspective that which protocol should we follow in terms of you know, filter criteria. Does that make sense? Are you, are you implying that one would be easier in a URL than the other? Because I'm not seeing much of a difference. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, when it comes to operators, uh, it's certainly easier in the URL compared to a SQL query because SQL query can go humongously large. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, th there's... Uh, I think this can also be as, get as complicated as a SQL query. I think SQL, the SQL subset here um, that we're that we're debating is not in a, a full SQL query. It's the where it's it's effectively the syntax of the where clause. It's just the operators from the SQL query, not the entire uh, crazy. Correct. So put, there's a put. yes. So there's the, the precedent. The precedent for that is is the SQL message selectors that exist in in JMS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense too. But now we would have another third standard if we all, so I see your point as well. Like if we introduce another standard, then we probably bring, I don't know, third or fourth standard in, in the community for filter criteria itself. Like, so for example, we have the SQL standards, then we have the OData standards. They also have rewritten their entire expression logic. Yeah. Now with this one, we would probably be introducing another one I, I do get this, but I thought that for cloud event, we probably want to make something simpler. So, yeah, probably, sorry, probably bringing to the same square. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> while Timur gets ready to come off mute, uh, just thinking you asked for me to bring up the documents. You mean this Microsoft Word document? Yeah, this one. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, while I'm bringing I, that up, let, yeah, let's go to Timur. No, I, I, I simply wanted to ask is like, uh, when I look at the document link, and, and, and I have a different perspective, of course, uh, and, and look at this from a different angle. I really like this expression language for event correlation. And I just wanted to think, see if you guys thought about using it for that and if that's even applicable. Because being able to do the expressions that I see in this document, to me, when I have you know a large number of events, I want to define primary and secondary and so on, correlation between those, this is really interesting for me for me at least. You're talking about, when you say this is interesting, you're talking about this the right here? Expression language and the examples that are uh, provided, I think a little below, especially when I can say um, the expression, like a certain context variable is this or that, or have an actual expression language where I can define the correlation of my events. Um, that would be really cool. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me, where's my screen sharing thing? Hold on, let me stop sharing that. And let me start sharing. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, there it is, Microsoft Word. So where in here, Clemens, should I go to show an example of what it would look like? Lots of XML flashbacks.
I muted myself in the most, in the least opportune moment. Go to the startup section six. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, the, you, as you see, uh, defining a language like this is actually hard uh, because I had to start from the bottom because I couldn't lean on the JMS spec. So I had to, had to do the whole thing with, with type inference, et cetera. So the simplest, so the simplest expression here is color blue, which is assuming a, um, so this is for an AMQP message. So this is referring to the default section, which is the application property section. Um, and that's how you can go and filter that you have a message where it has an application property um, and uh, that's called color and uh, whether that is blue, that's what that's doing. And then there's special uh, shorthands here to refer to the various sections of an AMQP message, which is not the case that we don't have that. So we would only have the simplest case. And then you can go in and further down, you have, so the field two, if that is equal test and the content type li is like application JSON, um, which means that's a prefix. Um, or plus JSON exists as an infix. Um, so you could go and filter that. Um, and then you can also say if two is test and the content types are like this and the color is blue or red, then you filter that. So if you want to go and build effectively subscription filters using that language, you can also, you can also do that. And you would only, with cloud events, you might only do the shorthand form um, because that's what the application property, what the properties are that you're mapping into. If you were doing that with AMQP, they would all be sitting, all the, the, the cloud events properties are sitting in the application bag, which means they would be all cloud events, colon, you know, the, the name that we give them. And then there's, if you scroll down uh, from there on 6.2, you get all the implicit conversion expansions and how you get a numeric type and, you know, how that all works from from turning text into text into um, um, into into types that you can go and compare between them, um, which is actually kind of hard to to do. And you we would have to go and do all of those things. Um, we would have to go and do for our expression language expression language as well. And so, so this is sort of like going, a... so this keeps going down. Like if you scroll a little bit further timestamps, and then here are the grammar elements. So there's, um, there's is predicates, in predicates, like predicates, exists predicates, that's what, the one that we had. Um, and then we have all the various operators that are defined, comparison operators that are defined. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of um, brutal stuff that you have to go and work through to, to define this in a way that you know, everybody can use it. And this is either a subset or profile of the fully uh, SQL spec, right? Yes. The, so this is the leaning, this leans on SQL 92, um, the ISO standard, and it's effectively breaking out um, uh, from SQL 92. But since it's not SQL 92 proper, um, and SQL 92 is far bigger grammar, um, this needs to go and, and effectively cut this down. And then it also somewhat deviating from SQL in the way that um, all the references to, um, uh, to the fields are different from a database. So in, in proper SQL, you have a notion of a database and a table and all those things we don't have that here, we have a message. And we're, so we're referring to, to, to a message and that requires that we need to go and change that um, uh, in some way, but otherwise everything else is, is borrowed from directly from SQL and, and, and mostly compatible with it. Okay. Um, Manuel, your hands up. Um, yeah, I did my fair share of SQL. I never liked the capitalized and the, the whole syntax. I, as, as I understand it, we're just using the conditions here, right? So this is Correct. not really that heavily SQL based. Um, and I wonder, so in all of what I've seen from the document, I try to open it myself, couldn't find it. How do you go with arrays and stuff like that? So if you have really complex expressions over multiple elements in, a, I don't even know if we have that in cloud events. I mean, cloud events themselves, we, we have a pretty flat structure, but how does that work with AMQP or? It, it doesn't. So that we've, we've so uh, structures are flat, 
um, there are there there are some there are some uh, scenarios where you can go and, and drill into a structure. Um, like for instance, you have these like this. The, you have these top 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 level elements um, that are the application property section, the property section, and the annotations, etc. But there is no um, there are no there's there's no support for arrays. It also would be far too expensive to do that in these. Um, um, uh, uh, in these filters, because if you deal with arrays, then you are already doing. Um, then you have to go and do things like joins and selections, um, etc. And so we've we've scoped those out. Because one, so once you deal with arrays, you're already on the on the slippery slope into having a programming constructs like four, like like four, etc. So we explicitly said we don't want that. And 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 JM, and JMS message selectors also don't have that. Does that answer your question, Manuel? Mm, not sure. So there is this uh, array element reference. So you can, for ordered lists, you, you can select elements. Uh, yeah, you, so you can. You can. Are you saying you, you don't have um, aggregate functions for arrays uh, that are no. part of this structure, or no, there is no aggregates. So you can see so you can drill into you can drill into an array explicitly uh, if you find one in the in the MQP type system, but there is no way to enumerate um, um, things from an array or do aggregations because this is this is for filtering. This is not for for aggregating. What I like about the JSON pass is the expression where I can uh, make a selection in the in the brackets. Uh, to find an element in an array. Uh, is, is that at least part of the drilling into a structure? Fine. Yeah, there's an in. So there's a there's an in state, there's an in clause. So you can you can say is is this value in this pre uh, pre predefined set. Okay. Okay. Um Slinky, I think your hands up next. Thanks. Yeah, I wanted to reply to Anish comment about uh, not creating a new spec. I mean, if I understood correctly what Clements is saying about SQL, we still need a spec like the one that now Doug is showing on the screen. So, we, which is tailored for cloud events. Am I right, Clements? Um, because there, yeah. there we, are we, some differences. So, still. Yes, absolutely. We need to have. We need to have a. We need to have a. We need to have a spec. Uh, clearly, it's just that I'm, I'm, what what I'm what I'm uh, arguing is that we should not go. We should try to align with something that exists in terms of concept concepts, and and um, and ideas that developers need to deal with instead of straying from from others. And it should also be possible to go and reuse um, functionality implemented in in existing messaging infrastructure. For our purposes, um, it is very unlikely that ActiveMQ will go and accommodate specifically um, um, cloud events, or that IBM MQ will. But they all already speak the SQL language. So if we can filter cloud, if we if we can if we can shape this cloud event spec such that we can leverage those implementations already, um, that would be great. That still means that we have to go and write a spec that will have to define define that sufficiently good for for um, for new implementations. Um, but um, so if you wanted to go and build this in, in something that is not that's not a not a message broker, um, but but it would be ideal if we didn't have if we could leverage existing functionality, which means if we can have a SQL profile um, that effectively ma already matches um, what is implemented in JMS or what is defined in JMS, then every JMS compliant broker which supports message selectors would be suitable. Did I answer your question, Slinky? Mm -hmm. Okay, so hold on a minute. Let me stop sharing that and go back to sharing. Where is it?
I can't find it. That is bad. Uh, <laughs> it's not working. Hold on a sec. Oh, there we go. All right, we're back to this. Okay. So, trying to figure out how to make progress here. Um, I, I, I guess uh, from my perspective, I'm not seeing much of a difference between the two. I got to be honest. I, um, uh, Slinky, aside from the syntactical difference of things like or versus double, you know, vertical bar and and versus double and sign. Is there is there a semant is there a semantic difference that you see between the two, or is it strictly syntactical? To me, uh, I see the syntax difference as the big one because if we uh, if we then define our own dialect, uh, we can match the semantic in the way we want. So we can align the semantic to the expected usage of the language. So for me, it's very uh, very the most important thing here is the syntactic difference. And I also don't see that big um, ability to real stuff later. So I don't know. For me, it's really a syntactic, uh, syntactical difference. And, and the syntax is, I personally think syntax is one of the most important features of any language. So depending on the syntax, uh, you, you attract a specific use of it. So. Okay, thank you. I think that's uh, where we need to agree, really. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, John, your hands up. Yeah, so I was going to ask, so if, you're, if your focus is primarily on the syntax, what, a, what about, what do you think of Clemens arguments around uh, being able to, uh, you know, I don't know, entice uh, the, the, the broker people to more aggressively adopt cloud events because they can reuse stuff they already have, whether either it's directly or very close, that, that seems like a, a pretty important argument to, to this discussion. Well, my counter argument is exactly that uh, SQL might not as well as track, uh, uh, function as a service people, JavaScript developers, so. So do you believe that, that Let's figure out how to word this. So, do you, do you believe that the 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 I don't know the JavaScript uh, ghetto purists won't pick something up just because it's SQL, even though they interact with SQL and GraphQL and all sorts of other APIs that aren't G, uh, JavaScript native? I don't think they won't pick it up. Um, just, uh, just think that it won't be natural to them. I guess. I mean, it's. I think we are really down in the personal preferences part. So. Right, but so that's. But I think that's part of the argument, right? If it's if we're down to to its personal preference for a particular subset of. I mean, you know, the whole point we're here is to create interoperability across a very wide spectrum of communities. So, you know, it's trying to, you know, how much are we trying to tailor to JavaScript people that, that are, you know, I don't know, um, <laughs> um, very opinionated, I'll say it that way, uh, versus, um, you know, it is an ecosystem and the dominant players in the ecosystem have already, more or less converge uh, on a solution. And like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a spool fan. So this is not coming from that bias. Okay, so, so Timur, your hands up. I just wanted to quickly say it has a counter argument, not only for JavaScript, like for example, in the business automation Java runtimes that I'm kind of writing for a couple of them, it's much easier for me to say, okay, we will implement cloud events and the cloud events expression language, which I'm sure the SDKs will for provide implementation for then including SQL libraries that I don't know who is going to actually um, 
or whose library I'm going to have to pull in. So to me, cloud events and cloud events has a lot of potential or to the community at least has um, a very good feeling, at least for me. Okay, uh, Remy, your hands up. Yeah, for me, uh, maybe another way to solve this is, I think it's optional anyway. So we could also just say there is like two specifications, one that is the SQL one and another one that is like uh, the expression language. And we just say, define the way it, they are supposed to work. And then as it's optional, depending who wants to implement what, and then it's just based on the product, no? So, so my hands up because that, that I, I'm having flashbacks to the WS Star soap days. Where everybody said, you know, which which security measure you use is optional. You know, they're all optional. Pick your favorite one, and and that's great. And the problem was there's zero interoperability. That's right. And and that personally, that's what I'd like to avoid. If we're going to have a language, I think there should be a, a single common one that. You know, if you're going to support some kind of query thing, then I think there should be a common one that everybody has to support. Otherwise, like I said, zero interoperability. But that's just my take on it. Oh, John, you dropped. There you go, John. You're back. Yeah, uh, I I think you used a nicer example that I I would, but I totally agree. If it's if it's optional, it's going to be crap. Okay. So okay, we're almost out of time here. Um, I don't think we can make a decision yet on this call. I think, I still think it'd be interesting to see a, a flat out line by line comparison between the two. Um, why don't I work, for, um, Slinky, how about you and I work offline and we'll, and if Clemens, if you can check your email during vacation every now and then. Um, we'll see if we can come up with a document that sort of shows these things side by side, and we'll be put that in front of the group and say, okay, here are the two choices from a straight syntax perspective. And then if there isn't a clear winner, we can then just do a vote. Well, we can do that assuming there is the same semantic. I mean, True. That's yes, a, but, that's I, but I think that would help. That would, like, I think because I saw that, like for example, the the SQL filter that uh, Clemens proposed has some different custom rules from this one. So we need to, to show those differences too. Yep. Or, or we need, or we assume just one semantic and we just show the the syntax difference. No, I I, th I think we need to make sure that for each one we show. Uh, the full feature set that we want to support, right? So for example, if your definite, your, your language here supports something that, that the SQL one doesn't then, and that's an important feature to us, or if you think that's an important feature, then let's put that in there and say, here's what yours looks like. SQL has no equivalent. Is that okay with people? Or are people gonna look at that and say, no, we need that functionality. So either that means we dump SQL in favor of your entire language, or we say, okay, we're gonna do SQL plus something extra. Right, we need to figure out what you know how that's going to look, but I think at least having the list of semantical, if that's a word, the list of semantics that are available, as well as the syntax associated with those semantics, I think you know, and side by side comparison will help people make a decision. So I think we need to take that. I think we need a, a clear side by side list that we can look at. Okay. All right. Anything else on this particular topic? Okay, um, of the other PRs that are here, uh, Lance, I don't think yours is ready based upon our previous discussion, right? You and I are still going back and forth a little on possible wording there. You didn't want to vote on that today, did you? No, I, I think we can hold Okay, on. Um, so very quickly, this one, this is in the schema, oh, this is in the schema registry. So, so Clemens, what do you think about this change? Um, uh, yes. You don't sound sure. It, no, 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 no. Hang on. That's that, that's that's correct. Okay. Uh, so 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 yes, that that was a that was a typo, and that should be we should merge that. Okay. 
I don't know what's on the difference on the, down here. I think maybe it's a spaces thing or something. Anybody have a problem with this? I mean, this isn't, this is in the scheme of registry spec, so it's not in one of the 1.0 specs or anything. Anybody see a problem with this typo? Any objection to approving, even though it's technically um, a relatively new PR? It seems like an easy one. Okay, um, wait. Okay, then this one. Okay, um, I can't remember who the, what the, the person's name was here, uh, C. Pyrus. So he basically pointed out that um, it's not just the int part of the JSON number, it's integer plus the optional prefix of so the minus sign. Does that sound right to people? Because I think even in our samples, we, talk, we do talk about negative values being a valid integer. Do people think this sounds right, these two changes, or do people need more time to think about it? I don't want to rush it, but. Uh, I think that's right. Yeah. It seemed like an easy one to me. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it won't break anything. Okay, anybody have any concerns with that? Oh, go, so go ahead. Should the JSON number already inc include the minus sign? I I assumed that was always the case. So no, uh, so I, it's uh, this issue was raised by one of my colleagues. So C. Pierce is one of my colleagues, and um, he um, we looked together at this RFC document, and actually there it's um, uh, separate. So the the sign and the number are listed separately. So if you just refer to this int component, it's really without sign, without minus okay. or plus. Yeah. All right, that makes yep. sense. Yep. Okay. Any objection to approving this one? Okay. So I'll tell you what, this one was just opened yesterday. So what I'll do is I'll say it's conditionally approved, and I'll get people through Friday to uh, to look it over. Okay. But it does seem like I'm very one, very a small one. Conditional. Okay. Cool. Other ones are still work in progress. I think Clemens, you have the bottom two that are supposed to be worked on and there's some discussions going offline about this one, so we'll talk about that. So with that, hold on a second here. Sanjay, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I think I got everybody else. Did I miss anybody for the attendee list? Okay, in that case, if you're not interested in the discovery interop uh, discussions, you're free to drop. Otherwise, everybody else stick around, please. And have a good weekend, right. everybody. Or actually, have a good vacation. We'll see you back on January, what is it, 7th? No, 12th, 14th. Sorry, it's January 14th. Bye, everybody. Uh, yes, Lance. Uh, I, I think it wasn't the data portion PR, my PR, that was approved. Oh, crap. You're right. Sorry. Thank you. I, I have to go too, but uh, let's all hope that 2021 is getting is going to be a better year than this, this one. <laughs> So before you drop, yeah. um, what are Microsoft's plans for the interop? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we have to, we have to do something. We have to do something, but it's uh, I'm I'm sitting on the critical path for that one, and I've been I've been over overwhelmed and overstressed and uh, over busy. So I'm hoping that we can that I can go and get something done in January. Okay, so consider yourself nagged. There you go. Yeah, I know. It's it's gonna it's it's it will get better in January because otherwise I'm just gonna go and flip out. Okay. In that case, um, have a good uh, vacation. Thank you. You too. Bye. Okay. So for the discovery stuff, I know uh, Scott isn't here. Um, Remy dropped. Who? Okay. Hold on a second. Do, 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 I know. Who else pseudo volunteered? I see the volunteer, but I have no updates. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't have any updates either. Other than at least <laughs> I, I have an endpoint up and I'm waiting for someone else to put up their endpoint that I can talk to. Because um, uh, Remy's endpoint was having issues. Scott's endpoint wasn't using valid URLs. So I, I have no one to test against. Um, yeah, I, I just need to feel this week has been crazy. Shit. Okay. Um, well, in that case, we can make this really quick by me just asking the question, does anybody have any updates or 
comments or anything that they want to talk about it because I feel like at this point it's just a matter of people need to find a time time to code this up or we need to actually be a little more explicit in terms of what we're going to be testing in terms of the interop flow you know like which exact semantics we're going to be testing like are we going to test pagination and stuff like that and I was planning on taking some time to fill out this document a little more in terms of the exact features you want to support but since no one did any coding yet about the base discovery spec itself I figured I had time to wait a little bit so anybody have anything they want to say or question? Okay. In that I, case- so I have one last thing, sorry. Doug. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I think I should have brought it into the community meeting, but do you remember that there was this issue where we wanted to point out difference between uh, subscription config and protocol settings? I took an AI, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hold on. Um, well, there was. Because, uh, <clears throat> oh, to that's the primer. Was it the primer? Yeah, maybe it was. Where was it? There was something. I don't remember. It was a while ago. If you can remember. The... No, that wasn't it. No. This looks like we're going really far back. It should be two weeks from, I mean, two weeks before this one, I guess. So let's see, there's one, there's two. Then probably third, but not more than that, I guess. It was an issue, wasn't it? No. Yep. Yep, outlining differences. To there we go. Third. Okay. Yep, that's the one. So let me do this. If it's up here, that will nag me to do something because I took an AI to help you work on that. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And we'll get back to that one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Otherwise, I would have forgotten it completely. No worries. Nope. All right. Cool. Anything else? Any topics at all? Since we're just chilling now. All right. In that case, we are done. All right. Everybody have a good vacation if you're taking one. And we'll talk again on January 14th. Happy holidays, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye.